Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. If you're new here, we would love for you to join our little crafting family by hitting that subscribe button. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let us know that you're here. So today we're going to be doing three Dollar Tree DIY Valentine's Day projects. And for our first one, we're going to start with the three heart hanging hearts with the tinsel on them some Dollar Tree florals, and I'm actually just gonna use the leaves and three flowers. Some of this roving yarn that I got from Walmart, it was pretty pricey, it was $17, but I've used it in a lot of my DIYs. Some pink burlap ribbon, again, this is from Dollar Tree, and then some of these pink self-adhesive little pearls that come in strings. And then just our basic supplies of glue gun, chenille stem, scissors, and wire cutters. So the first thing we're gonna do is start by taking off all of the tinsel and just unraveling it. These forms underneath have little plastic knobbies and this is a lot easier said than done because they're kind of wound around each of them and it goes in different ways. So I found that the easiest way to get it off is to just keep cutting and then taking off what kind of lets loose. So after you get that taken all off, you're gonna detach the little rings that are holding them together keep them on the forms because we're going to use those to put them back together after we wrap it so since this big old skein of yarn won't fit through the middle of the heart to wrap it i unwound quite a bit and then i went down about a third of the way and fed it through the middle and started wrapping from there and the reason i did that was to kind of cover up those little knobbies you could take wire cutters and actually just cut those off but it does hold the yarn a lot better the problem well it's not a problem but just one of the challenges is that roving yarn is yarn that has not yet been spun i learned that from a viewer but that's why it's so fuzzy and and fluffy so it wants to grab onto everything and and these little knobbies were really wanting to to grab it and pull it apart and then you have cotton going everywhere so i was just kind of trying to cover up some of them so that when i sent the larger portion i was pushing it more toward where i had already covered so it didn't grab as much and pull apart so i just kept doing that all the way around and i wanted to make it not look like rope and so i was going along and kind of flattening out the the uh, roving yarn and so I just I kept going all the way around some of the little knobbies on the outside had a tendency to peek through but you'll just be able to cover that up with the bulkiness of the yarn so once I got to the end of the covering portion I just tucked in my first end that I started with and then it actually stays pretty well but with the second part that met with it I decided to glue it down and so I am always a proponent now of these finger protectors which I will have the link for Amazon in the description box below so I've had a lot of requests for these and they are definitely finger savers. So I just glued that together and then cut off the excess and covered up all the little tabs that were sticking out and filled in any, any places that looked like it was needing some, some more coverage. So after I got them all wrapped, I took the round clips and connected them back together and I found it was easier to feed it through the back so that you could move the yarn away and then clip it through. And you see me use lamb's ear from Walmart all the time and I love it and it's a really good buy because it's only $2 for quite a bit. But I am always throwing away the uh, leaves from the flowers that I use from Dollar Tree because they just really look fake and 
they're kind of an ugly color so I was just trying to think of a way that I could utilize those and repurpose them or give them a little makeover so I decided to try my hand at painting them and so I just took some white chalk paint and diluted it down with just a little bit of water and then painted my leaves and I think they turned out so good and they look a lot like the lamb's ear. So even though it's not a big cost to go to Walmart and pay $2 for some, if you don't have any on hand, I think this is a perfect alternative. So now I'm going to make my bow and I first measure to see about how large I want to make it and then I'm using the fold over method where I'm just folding the ribbon over on top of itself. I made three loops on each side and then cut that off and then I made little notches in the center and I found the center by folding it in half and then make super small little slits on both sides and then crunch it up in the middle and wrap your chenille stem around it and twist that around nice and tightly, making sure that the chenille stem goes into those little cracks of the cuts that you just made. And then you just wanna fluff up your bow and get it all pretty and perky. And then we're gonna dovetail the ends. And how many of you guys have ever done this where you end up with an arrow first? Yep, we all do it, so don't feel bad. And so now that I've got my dovetails correct, I'm going to place an extra piece that I had of the ribbon and I'm gonna feed it through the top to kind of give it a little hanging piece. And then I'm going to wrap the uh, Chanel stem around that to make it a little hanger. Now we're gonna embellish and we're going to make our leaves and flowers do double duty by not only being pretty, but also covering up those rings that are connecting the hearts. So I took my faux lamb's ear and hot glued that, about three or four of them, and then put my flower on top of the lamb's ear and just hot glued that down. And I'm gonna do that on the second and third one and then at the top I'm going to kind of tuck it under the bow and have it peeking out. Now I'm gonna take the adhesive pearls and cut them apart and put them around each of the hearts. And they have really good adhesive, but as I was moving it around, they did have a tendency to kind of come off or move or get crooked. So you definitely want to hot glue these down using a super fine, small little dot of glue. And here it is all done and I think it looks super cute and it's a perfect addition to an area where you need something long, maybe next to a sign or something where there's a small wall between rooms or something. So I think it's so sweet and very soft and perfect for Valentine's Day.
For our next project, we're going to be using two of these Dollar Tree wood signs. This trailer that I got from Christmas time at the Dollar Tree, I love this and wanted to use it somehow. Some wrapping paper that is now out for spring. And this is what inspired the whole project. I just love this teal colored ribbon that's in the spring section. Some craft sticks, the larger size ones to put the two boards together and then some styrofoam you just need one of the rounds and I just cut it in half I used my Waverly chalk paint in white and ballet slipper and then also some cream coat acrylic paint in Tahiti blue and then we'll be using the Silhouette Cameo 3 for this project I accidentally put out the white vinyl but we'll be using black I don't know why I did that and then I had never seen this before, but this company called Echo Buddies reached out and offered to send me um, a couple of boxes of these disposable wooden cutlery sets. And they are so cute. And I'm gonna use some of the spoons for part of our DIY. But I think, I mean, they're useful obviously, but you know, for um, eco-friendly products and saving the earth and that's part of our responsibility but they are super cute and so I'm going to be using this in my Valentine's Day coffee buffet but also in this project and then also I'll be giving one box away to one of my viewers so I'll put more information on how I'm going to do that in the description box below as well as the website to order these and then finally, you'll need your glue gun, a spatula, the Cricut spatula, scissors, a chenille stem, and a paint pen. I wasn't sure if I was gonna use black or white, but I ended up just using the white one. So the first thing we're gonna do is take off those dreaded metal hearts, and it really kind of tears up the wood because it's put down with some really industrial strength glue. So after you get it off, I just decided to not even waste time with the block sander. You could totally do that and it is doable, but I just used my Black & Decker hand electric sander instead. So now we're gonna get our little streamlined trailer ready and I just took the Christmas tree off, again using my Cricut spatula, and then I'm gonna paint this pink all over. And I just went ahead and went over the um, glitter as well because I wanted some texture down below. I'm not 100% sure this is the best way to do it, but it sure was fun because I felt like I was a kid again and painting, like finger painting or something because it was so fun and messy and I just poured the paint onto the trailer and then filled everything in. It was kind of a, I don't know, Bob Ross moment or something. I didn't paint the tires and wheels because I'm gonna end up leaving those and I didn't even touch them up because they, they were well enough the way they were. And so I just painted the entire thing pink, including the, all of the edges and then I'm gonna let that dry and then start working on my love boards. So what I did with that is put those together using the popsicle stick uh, method on the back where I just hot glued the sticks directly onto the middle seam so it holds them together. And at the top of the boards are the holes where the ribbon hangers would go. So those I'm gonna flip over and that's gonna be at the bottom so you can't see them. So now I'm gonna paint the boards with the Waverly White chalk paint and I just gave it a pure white finish and this took two and a half coats. And then once I get done with that, I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna spell out the word home from these letters. I had planned to cut the words out with my Silhouette Cameo from some wrapping paper, but it didn't work. And so I'm gonna use these chipboard letters as the base and then cover them with the wrapping paper. I got these a while back from Target Dollar Spot. They were $3 for two different sets and they're nice and kind of thick and so that'll still work and that's actually probably better than just having used the wrapping paper alone. 
So using my Mod Podge, I'm gonna take that wrapping paper and place my letter on top after I cover it completely with the Mod Podge. And this is a messy prod process, but you just really wanna make sure that it gets all the way to all of the edges and the corners and the entire letter's covered. Otherwise, it'll start rolling up on you. But I also wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna get bubbly or wrinkled so i made sure to give a lot of pressure on there and push those bubbles out and then i was also mindful to incorporate mostly the pink flowers and not as many of the darker orange ones so just placing my letter on the back of the part that had the most pink that would show better i thought Anyway, then I just cut the letter out of the wrapping paper and I'm going to do that for all four, or well, for H, M, and E because we're going to, of course, use something different for the O. And for the E, I found it was easier to just cut little pieces from the middle parts of the inside part of the E and fold those over so you didn't have to cut it because it was it's hard to get in there with your scissors. So now I'm gonna take the wrapping paper and with my finger, I'm gonna make an indentation on the window, the door, and the little fender well of the trailer. And then I will cut those out and Mod Podge those onto each part. And then for the window, I just cut out the circle as well. I wanted to make sure again not to have any bubbles or creases or wrinkles and so you might get a few but if you used your squeegee that will help eliminate those as well and then for the little corners every now and then they'll tend to dry up because the Mod Podge dries pretty quickly as well kind of like hot glue so you have to work fast and there may be a spot that doesn't get full coverage and is not juicy when you put it down so just keep applying it until it's all the way secure and flat so now i'm going to take my little collection of wooden hearts that i have and i keep them in this uh, mag magnetic tin from the dollar tree and a viewer had reminded me in my last video i deconstructed a wall hanger with heart wooden hearts and i could have used the dollar tree ones and had I known it was going to be so time intensive last time, I would have, but they were the right size, so that's why I used it. But on this, I wanted a small heart to go in the little window, and I wanted to keep it in the wood finish because it's going to coordinate with something else that we're going to add to the sign. So once I found the right size, I'm going to hot glue that to the window. I am so bummed I apparently forgot to push record to show you how I painted the bottom of the trailer in the teal blue. So, and it was really fun too. But I'm gonna just go with it and you won't get to see me do it, but I painted the bottom and just went along the lines and around the fender and the door and then added some white to kind of give it a shaded look. And this was kind of easy to do because the glitter was down there. So it's really neat because it gives it kind of a textured look. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add some white highlights with my paint pen. And I just drew around the top areas and the fronts of, if the sun was shining from the front, you would see these little shiny marks in on the right sides of all of the features. So now I'm going to take my utility knife and I have these spoons from the Echo Buddies cutlery set and these are made out of birch wood so they're pretty soft and 
they're still durable and sturdy, but you can cut it after going through with the utility knife a few times and then just break them off. And so now I'm gonna take some hot glue and put those together and make a flower. So on the last one, I'm kind of alternating them, but I don't want it to just turn into a real tall spiral. So you wanna put some of them in the back and then some on top. And then the last one I cut all the way down and just kind of shoved it in between some of the handles there so that it would stick and then just hot glued that. Now I'm gonna take one of these sweet little Dollar Tree daisies and I cut off the end of the stem and then I'm gonna place it to cover everything up but I first take off the backing that holds the flower together so that it's upside down and there's more to stick to when you put your hot glue on there. So I put that right in the middle of the flower and so he's ready to go. And now I'm gonna put everything together on the board. So I first start by placing my H down and then my E because those are the two outside letters and you can adjust for any spacing issues with the other two that are gonna go in the middle. So I then put my M down because my O or my flower is gonna be kind of overlapping the letters. So I just used hot glue and placed it on the board and they stuck really well. You might have to um, put a little extra glue on the ends if you don't get it all the way because again, I'm always afraid to burn myself even with my finger protectors, but just make sure that you don't get any lifting letters. So then I attached my flower and just added hot glue generously and put that right in between the H and the M. And then I'm going to measure the area that I wanna place my letters on. And so after I do that on my Silhouette Cameo 3, I'm going to type out is wherever I'm with you and then cut that out of the black vinyl. And I didn't like the I in this particular font. And so I switched it out and kind of changed it once it was on the mat. And you can do that with a utility knife, but it needs to be pretty sharp. And then I'm gonna add my transfer paper or transfer tape. And this is the Walmart brand. No, it's not. It's the Dollar Tree brand. And I, use it in everything and it works super super good and the, this was a recommendation from a bunch of viewers that have apparently used this and know how well it works so i've been using it ever since so now i'm placing my decal and i kind of want it up toward the top because i was planning to put some hearts on top of the trailer, but I did away with that. It didn't look right. There was just too much going on. So instead I'm placing the teal covered bow or the teal colored bow. And so I first get the letters down and I'm using my squeegee that comes with the cameo to get all the bubbles out. I use that for a lot of things, as you saw with the wrapping paper and the Mod Podge but I just pull off the transfer tape and another viewer had recommended it if it's too sticky to get some of that stick off just to put it on your jeans or your clothing somehow and get the lint from there and it'll make it less sticky. So now I'm taking the two um, halves of the styrofoam and I'm gluing them to the board and then in order to lift my trailer, I'm gonna place that right on top of 
the styrofoam and I'm just trying to make sure that it's even and toward the bottom so that it's level with the board. So now I'm going to make just a simple bow and I just did a crisscross pattern and folded the uh, ribbon over itself and then cut it off and crunched it in the middle and used my chenille stem to pull that together and then I'm going to take another piece of the ribbon and fold it in thirds to cover the chenille stem and make it look like the middle part of the bow and then I'm going to take that whole thing and hot glue it to the top of the trailer. I really wanted the hearts on there and you guys could do that I just thought it looked a little cluttered just because of the busyness with the flowers on the wallpaper, or the wrapping paper. So, but it's up to you if you want to do that. I think that would be super cute in lieu of the Christmas tree. And it, either way, however you want to do it would be cute no matter what. So when this sign is standing up, it doesn't show the little holes at the bottom very much, but I just couldn't handle it. So I just took some of the Dollar Tree spackle and just filled in those holes. I thought I was gonna have to paint over it, but you can't even see it. It was so close to the background paint color that I just left it and left it alone. I didn't even have to sand it. So that just takes care of the holes. So here it is all done and I absolutely love it. I'm totally crushing on this teal blue color and I realized that when I was setting it up I have nothing to stage it with that was teal or aqua and except for these little jars. So I guess that's what's going to prompt me to do our next project in incorporating some of that teal as well. So I love this. I love how it turned out and I hope you guys like it. For our final project, we're going to be using this wood heart, three of the Dollar Tree hardback books, some glitter vase filler, and I'm just using the large white ones. So I actually had to take two of those out of an open package that I used already. Some of the teal ribbon and the pink burlap ribbon some Waverly chalk paint in white and ballet slipper, and then some Delta Ceram Coat acrylic paint in the Tahiti blue. And then we're gonna be using the Cameo again, so some black vinyl, the Dollar Tree magic cover transfer tape, my squeegee and weeding tool. And then I always put out flowers, just random ones, because I never know what I'm going to actually use in my project until I get there. So I just have a, an array here. And then this is the back of a frame. It's the frame stand from a prior DIY that I did. And I'll link that video below, but I took these off, but just make sure that it has the hinge on it if you're going to do this project. And then some cardstock. You really only need one sheet of this. And then our glue gun, scissors, wire cutters, chenille stem, and our ruler. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my cardstock and measure how long that spine is. 
because I want to cover it up. We're going to be painting it and the letters of the title will show through if we just paint directly on it. So this will cover it up and you won't see them. So I just took my hot glue and went down the little valley there and put my cardstock in it and just pressed really well so that it would kind of mold to the shape of the book so you could still tell it was a book. And so I'm going to do it on both sides and do it on all three of the books. So the way I want to work this is to have each of the three books represent one of our three children. So we have three. Our oldest is our son, Kelsey, and then we have our second child, which is Christine. And then our baby bonus is Kennedy. And so she's the youngest. So I'm going to have the two girls have their books in pink and then our son will be in the teal so it's kind of like pink and blue but since he's the oldest he's going to be on the bottom and then the middle one will be a little bit of a darker pink and then the top one representing kennedy is going to be a lighter pink so i just have to paint the tops of the books because the bottoms aren't going to show but i do want to make sure that i get all of the edges and the top parts of the spines top and bottom of the spine because that does show um, after even after putting the paper on and so forth so I just want to make sure that all of that is covered in the corresponding colors So once I got the pink ones done, I found that if you put them on a paper towel, you can move that project out of the way and start on another one. So in this case, I'm now working on the blue and then I'll set all of them aside so I can start working on my heart. And the first thing I'm gonna do is separate the glitter filler and get all of the larger white balls out of the package. And then I'm gonna start hot gluing those to the edge of the heart. And it's really cool that it worked out exactly right as far as the sizing, because in the little tip and in the part where the two rounded parts go together, it was the exact right size for making that come out perfectly even. So after I get those hot glued all the way around, I'm gonna take my paintbrush and there was a little bit of pink on it and I didn't mind that because it gave it a little, um, a real soft and subtle shade of pink. I had originally planned to paint the entire thing white, which is why I used the white balls, but then I was gonna add some teal to it, but it turned out looking so much like, kind of like a, the wooded finish, a natural wood finish, that I just went ahead and went with it and did that all the way around. You have to really get into the little nooks and crannies with your brush and to fill in those little gaps. You could paint the heart first and then put the balls on, but I knew I wanted to cover up the glitter that was on there, so I thought this way it would just be easier, but I love the way that this ended up turning out. So after all of the paint is completely dry, I am going to apply my decal and I measured and designed the wordage that I wanted on my heart. It's going to be sitting sideways so that's why the words are at a diagonal but it's going to say our story and then underneath that it's going to have our names Michael and Wendy and then each of the books will have our children's names on them. This is going to be available in my Etsy shop and you can customize it for your family and so you would just add as many books or take away as many books as the number of children you have. So after I'm done with that I'm going to apply it to each of the books and get the heart done. And I was thinking after I had applied everything that there was enough space. I could have put our love story instead of just our story. So if you do order this, let me know if you want it to say our love story or just our story. Now I'm going to hot glue my books together and then put my 
ribbon around it and I'm just using one piece of the pink burlap ribbon and I'll just hot glue that on the bottom to look like they're tied together. And then I'm gonna assemble it all and then put my backing or the little frame stand on the back of my heart using hot glue and put the hinge so that it's standing up properly and then embellish that once I get it all in order. Now for my favorite part, it's the embellishing. And so I'm taking a couple of the lambs ear and I'm gluing those together. And I included some of the faux lambs ear we made earlier and just hot gluing that little piece together. And then I'm gonna glue those to the front corner of my books. And I'm gonna make, a, not a bow, but I'm just gonna do some zigzag, um, just fold this ribbon into where there's three little puffs or poofs and so it's not really a bow it's just giving the impression that it is because I can't have anything I'd already made one and it was way too big so this is just another way of getting some of that ribbon into the decor but not having to make the full bow and taking up too much room so I just did three little poofs and then dovetailed the end and then I'm gonna glue that on top of the uh, leaves. And then I decided to go with some Dollar Tree hydrangeas. And so I cut those apart individually. And so I can place them and I'll cluster them and hot glue those into place. So now I'm gonna take some of those little berries from another sprig from Dollar Tree and hot glue those in as well, just tucking them under the hydrangeas. And I just used a couple of them just for some more prettiness. And then I had to add a couple more leaves on the outsides just to make it look all cohesive and finished. So I did that on both sides. And you can see I keep knocking into my heart and so it's on there, it's not coming off and it's pretty stable even though it moves a little. It's just, it's pretty sturdy and will stand up great. So now I'm gonna take one of my wooden hearts from my collection there and I place that right in the middle and so Kennedy and Kelsey, if you're watching, it's not because Christine is my favorite. That is just the middle of the books. So here it is all done and I'm loving it. I think this is a sweet, sweet way of recognizing your family and the love that you have for them. And since the heart is removable, you can make a stack of books and embellishments that match your farmhouse decor. I think this would be super cute if you did like just white books with some buffalo check ribbon instead and then the cotton and lamb's ear would be totally cute. And Or if you just want to make it match with whatever your colors are in your living room, this would be a great anniversary gift or pretty much anything. But I love it and I hope you guys like it too. I'm really excited about our weekly prayer post. If you haven't seen that, every week I'm gonna be posting something so that you can put on any prayers that you might need for whatever it may be. And I would ask that once you pray for somebody that's on that list, if you could click the like button on their post so that they know that that's how many prayers they've been receiving. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you aren't already, please consider subscribing to it and comment and share. And above all else, thank you so much for your support and love and encouragement. I hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.